Great, thanks, Holly. So um, I want to talk to you all about knowing your power, knowing um, how to make change, knowing about the legislative process in California, how state policy gets made, and uh, where you can plug in, where you can influence the process, influence the people that um, work for you as elected officials in the state legislature. So that's what today is about, people power, changing what's possible in client policy in California. So first, I wanna just start by doing a, a really quick overview of my organization, CLCV, the California League of Conservation Voters. Um, we started in the 70s and we really are focused on not only working to elect environmental champions, but also to working with them and advancing critical state and federal legislation to address the climate crisis, address health and inequity related to what got us here in the first place in the climate crisis. And in addition to that, making sure that we're holding them accountable. Um, if they do the right thing, do the wrong thing. It's the full picture of getting the, the folks in office who are going to do the big things, doing the big things with them, and then holding people accountable um, for their actions uh, when they're in, in, in office. So that is, that is CLCV. You can check out our website. Um, we have a environmental scorecard we release every year if you want to know what your state assembly member and state senator's environmental score was in the previous year. So um, I wanna start just by kind of grounding ourselves in the moment that we're in right now. And we are in the middle of a climate crisis. Uh, we're in the middle of many layers of crises, but these are all interconnected issues. Um, and I wanna just be really clear about the driving cause of the climate crisis being our exploitative relationship with nature and the exploitation of people. Um, and I don't mean you, I mean um, the, the forces that be, and I mean the um, capitalism and the ways in which we have decided to create a dependence upon oil and gas, which was actually a very intentional process that extractive industries like the oil industry over the course of history um, actually campaigned for our dependence on oil and gas. Um, and the oil industry just is a, you know, the big example, they have benefited from their own actions of burying climate science in the 70s, as early as the 70s, maybe even earlier, for all we know, um, which really led to a deadly delay in the fight against climate change and a fight for a healthy and livable world. And now industries who rely on exploiting people and the environment, and that's not just the oil industry, um, that's also the folks who are fighting against labor standards and regulations for the gig economy and otherwise, um, they want to stall progress on achieving a livable future, which is inclusive of a healthy, safe, and clean energy future in which there's not such immense racial and economic inequity, um, all of which are the root causes of the climate crisis. And that also don't want people to forget that large corporations earned a lot more during the COVID-19 pandemic while everyday people suffered. Um, and doing what's right will absolutely cost money, but they've got the money. <laughs> so just wanna be clear about that. Um, and the public demanding climate action and demanding an equitable future is working, uh, but we're up against people with a lot of money. And our fight is not over. We will never stop because our lives literally depend on it but we need to keep fighting. Um, and policy change is absolutely necessary in that. And we need to demand way more of our elected officials because the reality is, is that we already have the solutions. We know what we, need to, what we need to do, what needs to happen to solve the climate crisis. We need to green our energy grid and create millions of jobs at the same time. We need to restore natural landscapes. We need to ensure equitable access to nature, preserve biodiversity, and restore ecosystems that provide services like buffering communities from climate fueled disasters, like wildfires, like drought, like uh, you know landslides, and all of the things that are that are made worse with climate fueled disasters, like wildfires and flooding and drought. Um, we need to make agriculture carbon neutral. We need to clean up toxic sites and better protect people from exposure to toxic pollution. We need to stop polluting our water and we need to stop allowing industries to over pump our groundwater and our scarce water resources and to continue to contaminate that with pesticides and other toxic chemicals. 
We need to deliver the right to clean and safe drinking water to the millions of Californians that don't right now have access to safe and affordable drinking water. We need to phase out oil and gas and, and both the demand and the production of oil and gas. California, by the way, is the seventh largest oil producing state in the country. And we need that to happen with a really thoughtful and intentional plan to transition the oil and gas workforce equitably. We need to protect their pensions. We need to support displaced workers um, of, of the industries that we know need to be phased out to save our future. We need to reduce unnecessary waste and sh that are shortening the lifespan of our landfills. We need to compost more to reduce methane from landfills. We need to reform transportation planning to be less reliant on cars. We need to massively expand access to free and affordable public transit and safe pedestrian bike infrastructure. We need anti-racist land policy to combat the racist history of land use decisions. We need to build more affordable housing where people actually live and go to school. And we need to make sure that cities and counties are planning for housing and transportation in a way that prioritizes accessible mobility and affordability. So that's where you come in. That's where all of you come in. And that's where you can really be part of influencing that happening at an accelerated pace, because truth be told, this all needed to happen yesterday. Um, but this is the moment that we're in. So I want to quickly go through the California legislative process. So um, in California, we have the state legislature, which consists of the state assembly and the state Senate. This is different from Congress. So in California, the state Senate um, is 40 senators. There's 40 Senate districts. Each of those senators represents roughly 930 thousand people. There's 29 Democrats, 11 Republicans right now. Over in the California State Assembly, that's um, there's 80 of assembly members. They all represent about 475,000 people. Um, right now, there's 59 Democrats, 19 Republicans, one independent. Um, and this is where you can make a difference in this process. So this is how bills become laws. Um, it starts out in the House of Origin, which in this example, let's say a bill starts out in the assembly. AB means assembly bill, SB means Senate bill. It has to go through policy committees, which are related to what issues um, that policy is addressing. Is it addressing natural resources? Is it addressing transportation? Um, that's where the committee it would go to. It would then have to go to a fiscal committee, which says, here's all the laws that we want to pass. Here's how much money the state has. Here's what we can pass. Here's what we can't this year. Um, then it goes to a, what's called a floor vote, which is where all 80 assembly members or, or all 80 senators will vote on it. And then it has to go to the opposite house. So in this example, our bill, a, our AB assembly bill started out in the assembly. Now it has to go do the exact same thing in the Senate and then go back to where it was introduced for what's called a concurrence vote because bills are being changed throughout this whole process. So it's like a double check. Yep, we still agree with this. And then it sends it to the governor's desk for either being signed or vetoed. So all throughout this process, you can be calling your legislator, telling them what they need to be supporting, what's a priority for you, um, and making your voice heard because um, remind them that they work for you. Um, so I wanna talk about some key climate bills this year. And I know I'm going fast, but we're gonna have um, a lot of time for questions because I know y'all are gonna have some questions about especially these bills. So some key climate legislation in California that you should know about um, SB 467, this is a bill that would create health and safety buffer zones around oil and gas facilities. So we're talking about oil extraction and drilling sites not being sited next to people's homes. There's SB 45 and AB 1500. Those are both climate bonds, so natural resources bonds that would have to go to the ballot. And they, these would create new sources of funding for climate-related programs. So we're talking about drinking water, wildfire prevention, drought prevention, workforce development, and many other things. Um, both There's two versions because both the Assembly and the Senate have their two versions. They have to agree on one if it's going to go to the ballot, um, and it would have to pass through both of those houses. Then there's SB 260, and this is about corporate accountability. And it's about requiring large corporations that make over a billion dollars. So we're talking about the largest corporations, um, all of the US-based corporations that want to do business in California requiring them to disclose their full carbon footprint and actually report those in a way that's accessible and understandable to the public. And also setting 
emission reduction plans for avoiding overall temperature increases over 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is what climate science shows us that we need to do in order to avoid climate catastrophe. Um, then there's AB 525, and this is a bill about planning for offshore wind energy. So we have to replace oil and gas with clean energy. We know we need to do that. We know it's going to be uh, really, you know, it's going to be both big projects and small things like solar on rooftops and, um, you know, pairing those with batteries at home so that they're sort of mini power plants. But we have to make plans now to both create the jobs and create the infrastructure because it takes a while to do um, to be able to replace oil and gas uh, with clean energy. So um, those are some really big bills that you should be aware of, and we can come back to those if you have questions about them. Um, and I also want to make sure that you all know how to find out who your state legislators are. So if you don't know who your state assembly member is, if you don't know who your state senator is, there's a website right here, um, findyourrep.legislature.ca.gov. The, the V is missing on that. It's going to the next line for some reason. So it's .gov. Um, and you can type in your address and it'll tell you who your two legislators are. You have a state assembly member and a state senator. So once you find out that information, if you didn't already know who they are, then you can go to CLCB's environmental scorecard and check out what their scores are. So I chose to um, show the scores of the two people who represent the Long Beach area where, C where CSU Long Beach is. Um, and so that's Senator Lena Gonzalez and Assemblymember Patrick O'Donnell. As you can see, they have very different scores. Um, might want to call up Patrick O'Donnell and ask him why that is, if that is your representative. Um, so, you know, this is what we're up against. We're up against industries that spend a lot of money on lobbying and a lot of money on creating talking points that um, really use like things like you know, economic costs of things and the, you know, fact that, yes, it's going to cost money to do so much of these good things, but it is literally necessary to protect our future and to protect the health and safety of people. Um, and we have to do it. But this is what we're up against. And that's not to discourage you because I want you to remember that people power can win. And that's why it's so critical for you to make your voice heard to your state legislators, but also to all of your elected officials at the local level, at the federal level. Um, those phone calls make a difference. Uh, they tally up when people call and they say, hey, Senator Gonzalez, there were over 100 people calling about SB 467. Um, you know, your constituents really support this. So know that they make a difference. Um, but I wanted to provide just an example of a win, people power win. Um, SB 100 passed in 2018, and that bill set California on a path to achieve 100% clean electricity by 2045. Um, there's a lot of conversations about how do we do that? How do we get there in a way that is environmentally sound, economically sound? Those conversations are happening right now in the California State Legislature, um, and we can't we can't hold off because, like I said, this all needed to happen yesterday, and time is the very uh, important thing that we don't have a lot of in, in solving the climate crisis, but people power can win. And we need to make sure that elected officials not only know that you're watching, but also know that you want them to do what's right for our future. And you want them to support clean energy policies, policies that phase out oil and gas, policies that make us less reliant on cars and provide access to other mo mobility options for people, all of the things that I mentioned. So. Um, I will stop talking there because I do want to make sure that you all have time for questions. And I'm happy to go back to any slide, but um, I know this is a smaller group. So I want, I'm really hoping we can just ha kind of have a discussion. I can answer some of your questions here. Thanks, Melissa. That was great. Does anybody have a question for Melissa? And I'm going to stop recording.